So we talked about the first line, which is all about the individual, about creation, about investigation. How does the story continue? How does this evolve into the second line? The second line, in a way, is the most um, confusing and unclear for most people because on one hand, I mean, one of the names for the second line is the hermit. So you would imagine actually like a lone wolf, kind of like the first line. Yeah. But actually so much of the second line is about, and because we have the number two, you know, we have this separation actually. Now it's not just one, there's this two. And so there is actually an obsession with the other, with something else, with relationship. And so actually a lot of the second line is about relationship, but at the same time, it's also about being alone. So it's a very uh, interesting dynamic. The second line um, is obsessed with that one thing. And it can be that one person, like that one relationship, or it can be that one gift, talent, mission, whatever it is. It's said that the second line um, has a tendency towards natural talent, actually. Uh, the second line, and it's called a hermit because the second line can be so involved, actually, in what it's doing. And usually, like, the, the people usually will look at the second line like, wow, you're so good in this, you're so talented in this. And usually, people will try to get the second line to get out into the world and to help people or to share actually this gift that they have. Uh, and so the second line is all about marriage and marriage not just in the sense of relationship. That's why it's also called the hermit. It can be simply marriage to your obsession, marriage to this gift actually. And so they can be just practicing their craft, you know, and, and, and just doing their thing and not really caring. They don't care so much about the world. That's why they're called the hermit. They're deeply, deeply involved and obsessed with that one thing. Mm -hmm. And again, that one thing can be that one person. And so, you know, it's a very, very faithful line, actually, when it comes to relationship. You can expect a lot of dedication and focus from, from the second line. And again, this, this dedication to, to this one thing that they feel called to do in life. You know, and so if you're a second line in your personality, in your life's work, you know, it's like look into the, the, that one thing that's always been so easy for you. For them, it's because that's the thing that they're not really here to work hard on, on their thing. There's, there's, a, there's an ease about and, and a certain natural genius that comes from the second line. And that's why the world is looking at them like they're not, they're not even aware that the world is looking at them. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't even realize what they have, actually. It's just this, a certain, certain uh, naturalness, mm -hmm. you know. So it's, it's, we're going from the first line, which is here, you know, and so, like, self-obsessed to the second line, which is obsessed with something else. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's like the second line externalizes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's, it's, it's already that. It's about this two and the dynamic between the two and, and you know, what do you want to be married to? Or who do you want to be married to? You know, and that's the thing. And, and, and if it's a second line unconscious, then it's more connected to the body and to the health, actually, of the person. And for their health, the second line either needs to live with someone else and to be in partnership with someone else because it's very extremely important for them. And the second line gets so much from relationship. You know, it really needs, to, it really needs that relationship. Or actually, you know, are you married are you in a relationship with something bigger not just not just a person or both mm -hmm. i found usually observing those second line uh especially second line unconscious they usually end up uh, doing both mm -hmm. yeah. i can make a, a distinction here uh, it's more a question really because both the the first line and the second line can have like a, a this deep concentration into something this going deep into something however it f sounds to me like the second line is more about one thing and the first line can have a wider net of interest. It's not just this one thing. How do you see that? The second line is not looking for it. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's, the first line is called the investigator. So it's really about that. It's, the whole life is about, it's about investigating and actually finding that one thing or those few things. Mm -hmm. Yes, which are really solid, which really work, which you, you really like. You know, and maybe it's going to be a bunch of them. Who knows? The second line, that's why it's the, the second line has this naturalness, you know, and, and actually 
I find that the first line profile usually struggles a bit with this idea of, you know, this one thing. Mm -hmm. Usually, I, I keep noticing the first line is, and usually because it's also one three, so there's this third line which mm -hmm. needs constant change and, and freshness, but um, the first line is constantly investigating and, and, and never, you know, fully sure that this is the one thing. In a way, the first line is, is meant to never really stop investigating. You know, there's always more to dig into. The second line comes already like, yeah, I'm, I have this thing inside, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just about externalizing that, mm -hmm. that, that gift. So it's, 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 that's where the difference is between the, between the two lines. Mm -hmm. Is there any particular advice or guidance or maybe a tip that you can give to anyone that has a uh, line two but is just in the first steps of... Um, embodying that knowledge? Well, especially if you have a line two uh, in your design, so the second number, um, yes, relationships, yes, dedicate yourself to this and that, but it's time alone, mm -hmm. this thing of the hermit. You, you need for your health time of being alone in your own thing uh, and without any disturbance. You know, you need to honor this hermit inside, actually. So it's really important because the world anyway is going to keep pulling you out of it. That's the thing the, the the because of your natural talent, actually, and your natural gifts, the world constantly is like, hey, like, can you do this? Can you help people with this? Can you help me with this? Mm -hmm. You know, the world usually will want to associate with you, uh, work with you. But you need to find actually like you don't need to do anything to attract actually those those invitations mm -hmm. from the world. So. You know, the second line gets a lot of attention mm -hmm. all the time. And so focus on this hermit thing, mm -hmm. you know, like g g give yourself um, like for, let's say like let's take the example of the five two, the line five personality, which we will go into uh, is very much about this, you know, leadership, certain mm -hmm. charisma that comes with it and so on and so on. But then there's this line two unconscious, which is like, okay, actually, you, you need this time alone. You need this time focusing you know, on something else than, than, than people. Mm -hmm. um, and so giving yourself that time of, of retreat and, and aloneness is extremely important for, for your health.